So at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, we are really, really focused, um, like a laser, on the completion agenda. In, in particular, we're interested in most students who enroll in a community college completing what they started. And so to get there, it's a tough job, right? It's a tough job from where we are now. And we looked around and we tried to decide where are there opportunities to work with large numbers of community colleges? And Achieving the Dream has a great tradition of working with students in an intense way and to help them realize their dreams, achieving the dream. Uh, but what they also do really, really well is they think about um, how we use evidence most effectively. How do we analyze the data to make better decisions? perfect fit for a place like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation where we also like to think about how does evidence inform our work. We used to kind of go on a hunch. We had a sense of what was happening at our institutions, but being able to tell a story with data makes a significant difference. It makes a significant difference whether we're talking with faculty or whether we're talking with the legislature. So there's an ability to um, make a different set of decisions based on this new data. And the data I think that was surprising in the beginning was just the number of students when you disaggregate by race and gender and class, the large proportions of students across all of those demographics who were in developmental ed. A real surprise. Uh, and achieving the dream, so that was kind of where they started because so many colleges were finding that to be a challenge. And now what we see is those colleges are saying, Okay, that's a good starting point, but now we have to think about progress. How are students progressing through our systems? And ultimately, how do they get to completion? Those initial changes of first, let's look at our data, disaggregate it, identify where we're losing a lot of students, ending up looking at developmental education, that was a big change a number of years ago. Now you think, well, of course, but that was significant at that time. The shift to thinking about progress and completion is the next evolution, and I think that's the exciting part. Colleges are still experimenting to, to see where they can get the most traction in those areas, but that's, I think those are kind of the biggest changes that we've seen. Even just shining a spotlight on the inequality is really significant. So again, there's sort of a hunch about how things are going, but as an institution, you feel like, we're doing a great job, we're access, everybody has access. But now what we're saying is, but we want everybody to be successful, or most people to be successful. There's a lot of work to get people ready. So institutions now are dealing with many more English, English language learners. And um, so when you think about that from an equity perspective, how do you have the right systems in place to serve those students? How do you help them get college level, uh, get ready for that college level course? How do you help them progress through the system? Really, really important. I think as you think about, so you know, we all know the data. Um, there were presidents talking about this yesterday. We are becoming a, a country where the minority will be the majority. And so institutions have to think about what does that mean in terms of how we serve our students, not just at that entry point, because we've said we're letting everybody in, but how do we actually help those folks to be successful? And just the last note, um, what's really important to us at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is also this interest in um, in stopping the cycle of intergenerational poverty. And so when you think about equity, it's not just about race and gender, it's actually also about um, socioeconomics. And so how do we think about making sure that students who are low income also have the opportunity, not, again, not just to access our institutions, but to be successful? What are the programs that need to be in place to help them? And if, you know, we hear quite the, the main speaker, student speaker on uh, the opening night of this conference, talk, young woman, you know, graduate of Oakland County Community College, but she talked about all the obstacles that were in her way. And some of it um, really was about socioeconomics. She needed somebody to help with childcare. She didn't even sort of see herself in this role. She didn't have the dream first. Others had the dream for her within her institution. And I think that that's a really powerful um, message for low-income students, students of color, that somebody believes in them, and they're going to help them get all the way through to completion. And at the very beginning is this very first connection that you have uh, with an institution, whether you're in high school or you're in the world of work and now you've decided to go to college. And being able to figure out what a student needs in order to be successful in those early years of college is important. So another way to think about that is diagnostic assessment. Really important for both students who are in high school to understand 
where am I? Am I on the verge of being in a uh, being placed in a remedial class? Uh, but also really important when a student is coming who's been working, they need to have some data about where am I on this spectrum of college ready? And so we're, we're really interested in rethinking diagnostics, rethinking the placement process. Are there ways to use other things other than Compass and AccuPlacer, or can we beef up Compass and AccuPlacer in some way? Uh, and the things that we're interested in are the non-cognitive skills. So again, when I think about our speaker from the other evening, part of what made her successful was that she had tenacity. She had all of the right kinds of um, supports around her to help her to be successful. And we're really interested in, can we think about the non-cognitive skills at the same time as we are assessing for content knowledge? Uh, so that's really interesting in terms of diagnostics and that first connection and transitions. Um, also really interested in, the, in making sure that students who are GED are also linked to community colleges and that they see a path for themselves beyond GED, that it's actually GED all the way through to a credential of some kind. Uh, so policy will be, uh, we hope to see some policy changes like we've seen in Florida and other places related to diagnostics. I think the other thing um, that we see quite a bit is um, student pathways or entering a program of study is really important. So not allowing students to just come in and make a bunch of choices and just sort of flounder, but actually giving, the, giving them structured pathways to help them to see an end, to be successful. Um, and I think that the, the sort of last area is what's the intersection with financial aid? So as you think about, well, there are probably a couple more, but as you think about financial aid, how we see students who are enrolling and um, the challenge is their finances. But there are two things that happen around financial aid. Number one, when a student enrolls and they receive their uh, reimbursement, they usually get it in one lump sum and the money is gone mid-semester. So we're really interested in helping students to avoid the barrier of then, oh my gosh, I have a financial problem, by looking at a pilot we had which uh, was uh, aid like a paycheck. So the student received the aid over the course of the semester to try to help them not be in that kind of financial crunch because that's a barrier to success. Um, the other thing that I would say is uh, working on data transparency and um, helping both a student to have better data about how they are performing, he or she is performing, and also helping faculty members understand the, um, how the students are performing. That's one way of thinking uh, about data. And the last area that I would just highlight is we need to really rethink the role of technology. And so that kind of relates to this data question. Um, you have institutions like Santa Fe College where uh, in Florida where they are experimenting with sending text messages to faculty when a student um, either enrolls in or drops their class, but they're using a technology that faculty already use to help them manage. Um, lots of colleges are thinking about learner relationship management, and um, the other area is of course in the classroom. How do I use technology effectively, whether it's a new course or it's some sort of supplemental instruction? So it's a long list. But I think that those are areas where technology can help get past some barriers of, I don't know how to manage, the, if I'm a, a faculty or staff member, I don't know how that student's path is working. I can help them get on the right path. If I'm the student, I can see my path. Using technology, I don't have to rely on every one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, and I think just having that data, I think I can make better choices as a student or a faculty member. It's a long, long list. These are the first colleges anybody goes to. They all, they want to be able to say, can we get to the Achieving the Dream colleges? Are they willing to test this idea with us? Are they willing to experiment? Because it's a group of colleges that have proven themselves over and over again to be open to research, to be open to innovation. Um, and so on the one hand, the colleges are kind of leading the way because they've set the table for this, and they're, they've shown their openness to participate in new initiatives and new ideas, or expand existing ideas, get them to scale. At the same time, I think as an institution under the new leadership, and as a new 501c3, ATD is saying, we could get better at this. We could actually network and think of ourselves as a network, as opposed to individual colleges or individual states in achieving the dream. This is a network, and what does that mean when you're a network? How do you behave differently? 
How can we distribute information, help you distribute information about all of these great ideas, all of these great lessons? So I think that Achieving the Dream is both going to continue to be the go-to network for new ideas, it's the go-to place to learn about new ideas, and it will be the go-to place to share those ideas and spread them.